All right. Before we wrap up this episode, I want to focus on some key takeaways I got from talking with Carl Richards. And today I have a guest joining me. It's Joe Mecca from our sponsor this season, Coastal Credit Union. Now, if you got the email this week, you'll know why we're excited about partnering up with Coastal. They not only have competitive rates and great service, we've been members for years, so I can vouch that we've had an incredible experience working with them with our checking, savings, and our mortgage. So, Joe, I'm really excited you're joining me for this uh, segment. Thank you and welcome. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I think this is a, a perfect opportunity for us to chat because this is something that couples deal with, which is we know we're supposed to be talking about our finances. We don't want to find out that there's a secret bank account or our um, spouse is like deep in debt, but it's tough talking about money. So I kind of wanted to chat with you about that, making this a normal part of our conversation. How would you describe like you and your wife? How do you guys work with finances? What kind of personalities do you guys have? Well, I've always been the saver, so I can't, I can't, I was, thinking back, I was thinking back as far as I could go. And I don't know if I've ever been in a relationship where I wasn't the saver. So, um, but it's always been with a spender too. So I think there's a, a balance to the universe. Um, you know, we've talked before and I always like to joke that, uh, if it was up to me, you know, we'd have money, but no food. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, the other way around, it would be we'd have lots of stuff but no money. So um, it's all about striking that balance of being in constant communication, um, you know, making it work. Because one person's going to have a focus mm -hmm. on what you need, yeah. um, and the other person may have a focus on what you need to do so that your future's taken care of and you're planning ahead for those expenses that you know, aren't in the immediate future. Yeah, definitely. I, I think a lot of couples relate to that. I know um, I have gotten to become more of a saver being around my husband, but naturally I'm the one that's handling the day-to-day, -day, taking care of the bills. Uh, if we have any home projects, I'm the one that kind of gets the estimates and spending and scheduling all that. So like you said, it is striking that balance. We want to make sure that we're in a good financial spot and we stay that way. But I know we can't always just focus on the spreadsheets and the numbers. So I'm kind of curious when you are coming up with your budget and what you guys are doing, what are some goals that you and your wife have? Um, so I always like to take a look at it in a couple different ways. You know, what is, what is the short term? What do you, mm -hmm. what do you need for the next um, week or so? Well, actually, let me back up. Yeah. Um, you know, I always make sure first the two big things that are taken care of are, are the savings. You know, I'm a strong, strong believer in pay yourself first. Mm -hmm. So what's going into, you know, savings in the money market account for the short term, what's going into IRAs, what's going into 401ks and making sure that that stuff is all set aside. Also HSA account. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we're going to talk about that in a later episode, but make sure the HSA account is funded well. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, what are the, what are the upcoming expenses and take care of the bills, make sure those are squared away. Um, from there, you know, I like mm -hmm. to look at, okay, what are, what are my discretionary spending opportunities? Um, yeah, I like to budget every week, even though I get paid every other oh, week. Oh, okay. I like to budget my discretionary spending every week, you know, and that way it kind of resets. And if I don't mm -hmm. spend it all, I can roll it into a later goal. Um, and then I also keep a little bit of a reserve for those things that are recurring expenses, but don't necessarily pop, every, pop up every week. So this could be some, you know, household repairs, uh, things that I need for the yard, you know, it's lawn season. So I go to Lowe's on the weekend, mm -hmm. spend $100 get home and dump it on the ground. <laughs> so it's funny how that works, right? Yes. <laughs> but, um, you know, beyond that, I like to, I like to set aside, you know, I've got three, three buckets mm -hmm. that I save for, you know, one is I could just call it the fun budget. That is mm -hmm. vacations. That is gifts. Yeah. Um, that might be you know, opportunities that pop up along the way that, you know, I've already got money set aside for. Yeah, I don't like to be having to plan for things six months ahead of time. I like to be saving for them. And then when they come up, it's like, okay, well, I've already got money set aside to take a weekend trip somewhere. So, you know, that's there. Um, I have from the day I paid off my car have been setting aside that car payment for the next car. Mm -hmm. So every, you know, every time I get paid, a little bit of money goes into, you know, it's in the money market account, but I've mm -hmm. got a spreadsheet where I earmark it for, you know, I'm going to need a new car at some point. So save yeah. the money for the next car. Um, you know, might still end up with a small payment, but ideally won't have a payment the next time. That's so smart. Car. Um, 
And then I've got another bucket, which is always kind of like, what's the next big goal? Mm-hmm. Uh, and believe it or not, I don't currently have one. I'm still putting money in the bucket, yeah. but I don't have a big goal. Um, you know, in the past, it's been to, you know, bump up the emergency fund mm-hmm. another level to do a household repair or household project. Um, and uh, at the moment, I actually don't have, any, have anything planned for that money. Um, just came off of a big tax bill and had to buy a new appliance. So um, oh, yeah. you know, Stuff the money was there for it, but mm-hmm. I had been setting it aside for something big. So hopefully something will come up in the uh, immediate future where like, no, that's what that needs to go toward. That'll be a, that'll be a good use of that money. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good point because sometimes um, I'll talk with people and they'll say, well, I, I don't want to budget all of my money because I, I want to have some freedom and having it tucked away is smart because if something does come up, you know, you have that flexibility of just diverting that money to, to those goals. And also, you know, um, Coastal also offers some competitive rates with savings. So if you don't have a good use for it, it's nice to stash away and let it grow. Right. And then, hey, you have a little bit of money earned on top of that. And if it's a trip that comes up or if you want to help out someone, you can do that and know that that's already taken care of and it's not going to throw you off your budget. I love that. So you sound like you're very organized. Let's see that. Um, you do the savings and you have a plan. So I guess you're the go-to finance person in your marriage. How often do you guys kind of powwow about where the money goes and uh, kind of check in with each other? Um, for me, it's always been not as often as you think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because it's been, you know, here's the money, you handle it. Um, but I talked to a lot of other couples where, you know, people are trying to strike a better balance. You know, maybe they're both savers, maybe they're both spenders and they need to be a little bit more disciplined about it. Um, so then it's good to probably talk every month or so. Um, you know, I, I know you like to recommend money dates where you, yeah. know, you set aside some time and, and, you know, An excuse to have fun. <laughs> right. Right. And, and, uh, you know, revisit that. Um, you don't want to do it too often cause then you're kind of micromanaging your money. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's pointless to talk every week about, about money. Um, I like every month. Every month is mm-hmm. good. That's um, you know, usually when I update all of my financial spreadsheets to get a kind of idea what the big picture looks like. And I always call the first of the month spreadsheet day. So I love it. I love it. <laughs> but I think you bring up a good point uh, because you don't want the opposite where you're micromanaging or you're almost causing stress, worrying about the numbers. Um, nowadays, there's so many different options, like the, the auto bill pay, like we schedule, I want to say 85% of our money because most months, the regular bills got to get paid. We have our transfer into savings, kind of like you. We have some specific savings and then we have a general savings. But then also, if we need to adjust, it's those special things we kind of talk about, you know? So it's not every week, oh no, did you see the checking account? Did you see the um, savings accounts more like, Oh, we're going on vacation next month. So keep that in mind next week. Don't eat it out as much because I want to save that for the trip or something like that. Um, those conversations, you know, how we talk about money, I think make a huge difference. I, I love your tips, Joe. Uh, the last thing I want to ask you is, do you have any other tips to kind of share that makes talking about money less stressful or something that you've noticed works with you and your wife? Um, you know, just, just talk a lot, get, be in agreement on what those goals are and where you're trying to aim for. Um, yeah. And then automate the way to get there. So, you know, you talk about automating savings and automating your bill pays. Um, yeah, that's a great thing to do. Once you're in agreement on where the money should go, and what it's, what it's going to go there for. Yeah. Set up the process to make that happen and then check in, you know, and it could be three or four paychecks down the road because you're not going to see any mm-hmm. real progress in a week or in a paycheck. Yeah. But a couple, let a couple cycles happen before you start to see that trend. And like, Oh look, we're going to make a progress towards saving for that new refrigerator or we're making progress mm-hmm. toward saving for that trip. Um, and then once you see that happening, it's a lot easier to be in agreement on the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. Automation has made things simple. Cause I don't know about you, but we have full lives and we enjoy it. We have two little ones at home. So if we can spend more time thinking about them and less time, you know, manually taking care of the finances, the better for us. So guys, we have plenty more tips. If you want to find out more about how to work together on your money and marriage, we have a private Facebook group. 
that's called Thriving Families, where we kind of get into what we're doing. Uh, we share ideas and swap stories. And if you're in the triangle area and you just want to bank better and have another option to help you reach your goals, please check out Coastal. You can get all the information in the show notes or just go to bankbetter.org. Thank you so much, Joe. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks, Elle.